Everybody in the natural hair community will tell you that protective styling is the way to go. But what a lot of people don't tell you is that there is a proper way to do a protective style. It's nine o'clock, the kids are sleeping, and it's finally Friday. All right, guys, so we're back. <laughs> we're back, we're back, we're back. This is another Friday video where I am showing you what postpartum hair looks like for me. And I'm taking you along this journey of regrowth and restoration of my hair. And we're doing whatever, cause it's Friday and we could do whatever we want because the kids are sleeping and it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Friday for me is like, the day that I get to just kind of breathe and just unwind and just relax because it is the beginning of the weekend and you know the weekends are always fun. But the really cool thing about these Friday videos is that I premiere them. So that means I'm watching it with you and I'm live in the chat. So if you're here and you're live, say what's up. Hey, how's it going? How is your Friday going so far? Mine? It's going great. The first half of this video, I am gonna share with you three bad habits that I have been learning to break. The reason I'm gonna share those three things with you is because if you are doing those things, I want you to stop. I want you to stop so that you can also grow longer, healthier, and stronger hair. The next part of the video is gonna be really quick. I'm just gonna show you my hair and show you my edges. The reason why I'm doing this is because I am contemplating adding something new to my hair regime. And because I haven't quite decided whether I want to or not, I'm not gonna tell you what that thing is. You'll have to wait and see. If I decide to do it, I'm gonna let you know what I did and why I'm doing it. If I decide not to do it, I'm gonna let you know what the product was and why I decided not to do it. So I'm gonna show you my edges, take my wrap off, and let you see what's going on so that you can see, number one, where I started. If you watch back those videos, you can see the progress. And number two, we can get another visual of where I'm beginning again as I add this new routine and see where I go from there. So let's get right into it. Bad habits, and they're hard to break. So don't get the impression that once I tell you these things, that if you are doing them, you're just gonna click your fingers and then suddenly you're gonna stop. I'm still actually working on breaking these bad habits myself, but I've discovered that they are bad habits that need to be broken. I'm taking it one day at a time and I'm just being really intentional about walking through this hair care journey in the best way possible. So a bad habit number one is doing protective styling the wrong way. Everybody in the natural hair community will tell you that protective styling is the way to go. But what a lot of people don't tell you is that there is a proper way to do a protective style. My go-to protective style was just braiding my hair straight back. What I found was that when I braided my hair straight back, I've been losing moisture, I've been pulling at my edges, and I've been ignoring my hair thinking that you know, it's straight back, I don't have to worry about it. I found that twisting or braiding my hair in smaller sections has helped my hair to retain more moisture. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by twisting and braiding in smaller sections, cause that's what's under here. And as soon as I get to the last part of the video, you're gonna see what I mean. Most people, when they're doing protective styling, they think that as long as their hair is tucked away, that the hair is being protected. But that's not true. Things that you have to consider when you're doing protective styling is one, is the hair too tight? Two, what is the weight of extensions or hair that you're adding in? Is it causing your hair to be too weighed down, too heavy? Three, how long are you keeping this protective style in? And in the time that you're keeping it in, are you moisturizing your hair? Are you paying attention? What are you doing while your protective style is in? Those are just a few things that you have to look for when you're putting in your protective style. If you're paying attention, you can do protective styling the right way and actually promote growth and promote length retention. The next bad habit that I had was failing to maintain a relationship with my hair. Have you ever had a long-term friend you just assume you knew everything about them just because you've known them for a long time. In the beginning of your relationship, you probably went out to get pizza every Friday night. And every Friday, without even asking the other person, you just assume, hey, we're gonna go out and get pizza. And then you notice that your friend is a little bit withdrawn and not so much into the pizza anymore. The relationship is being weighed down, you guys aren't talking as much, and you slowly start to drift apart. And that's just because you have not maintained the relationship. You still have a relationship, 
but you're not doing what is necessary to keep that relationship alive. For example, asking the question, hey, do you wanna get pizza tonight? Do you even still like pizza? Switch it up a bit. It's the same thing with your hair. When you are not maintaining the relationship with your hair, you're going based on the old hair products that your mom used to use, the old styles that you used to put in, the old time combs and the old time routines and everything that you're doing with your hair, things that you've been doing since you were small. And nothing has grown, nothing has evolved, nothing has changed and you just don't have a maintained relationship with your hair. Consider your hair its own person. If your hair is like mine, it's its own person. Doing its own thing, being its own entity and not caring about what I have to say or what I have to do. And that was just because I was not maintaining the relationship. It was like my hair and I were in relationship with each other, but nothing was thriving, nothing was flourishing, nothing was new and exciting. My hair was my hair and I was me and we just learn to coexist without interacting with each other. And that's a bad habit that you need to break. Get to know your hair. How you're gonna do that is you're gonna spend time every day, I know, every day trying to figure out your hair. I know that you're gonna hear a lot of, I thought we weren't supposed to be manipulating and touching our hair, I get it. But that is after you learn what your hair loves. Sometimes you might discover that your hair likes a lot of interaction. For me, I ignored my hair when it was underneath a wig or in a protective style. But what I realized is that my hair loves water. I never wanted to wet my hair because I thought, oh, if I wet my hair, I'm gonna have to detangle it. And if I have to detangle, I'm gonna be in pain. I'm gonna cry. It's gonna be messy. I just don't wanna do it. But what I realized is that my hair loves water. And the more that I wash it and the more that I mystify it or wet it up a little bit, the happier my hair is. So develop a better relationship with your hair and learn how to maintain that relationship. Habit number three, and this is the last one before we get to see what's under here. Habit number three is ignoring your scalp. I know that we're on a hair care journey, but hair care also means paying attention to your scalp. That bad habit has cost me a lot of sleepless nights. I just assumed that when I was awake in pain, it was because my hair was too tight, or I had a headache, or the extensions that I used just didn't agree with my hair or something like that. But what I didn't realize is that I wasn't paying attention to my scalp. I recently learned that my scalp cannot handle product buildup like I thought it could. I thought that I could just layer on product after product after product and just deal with it. I thought that it was healthy. I thought that it was making a difference, a positive difference in my hair. While my hair felt better, and it looked and appeared more moisturized, my scalp was suffering. And when your scalp is not healthy, new hair is going to find it very, very hard to grow. It's like when you have a baby, and just before you have a baby, you create a beautiful and a peaceful environment. You decorate the nursery, you clean up the rest of your house. You get into a peaceful mode in your body and in your mind so that when the baby comes, everything is good. It's the same thing for your hair. Your scalp is like the nursery. You wanna make sure it's nice and clean and ready so that when those new growths start coming in, everything is good. So, those are three bad habits that I've had. I can go on and on about my bad habits, trust me, because it's been a long time since I've been neglecting my hair and relying on wigs and extensions to somehow cover up all of the things that I should have been doing. I won't get into more details. I'm sure that as we go along this journey, you're gonna hear more about my bad habits, but I've made a commitment to break those bad habits so that I can grow stronger, more beautiful, and healthy hair. Postpartum hair loss is not gonna get the best of me again. I promise you that. Let's get into what's underneath this thing. Before I take my wrap off, I am gonna do a little recap to let you know what I've been doing so far to grow my hair. In an earlier video, I did a DIY deep conditioner and I will link the video right here if you haven't seen it. So far, that is what I've been using on a weekly basis to deep condition my hair. Now I mentioned before that my hair loves to be washed. So if your hair also loves water and loves to be washed, you might wanna consider a weekly deep conditioner. If not, maybe a bi-weekly or an every three weeks might work better for you. The first benefit that I've noticed from doing that deep conditioner is that my hair is easier to detangle. Before, you can even look back to the videos, my hair was so hard to detangle. It was a nightmare. So much so that I did not even wanna touch it. I didn't wanna wash it. I didn't want anything to do with it because it was so painful and it was so difficult to detangle. And I used to use a lot of combs and I had to use small combs to get the really, really fine knots. And I had to pull and I had to pull and I had to pull and it was just crazy. Now I am able to detangle my hair with my fingers 
with ease. The second benefit is that the color and shine of my hair is being restored. Now my hair has always been black, but it's not dull. You can see the vibrance again. You can see the shine again. I am so happy with the results so far and it's just been a couple of weeks. The third benefit is that overall my hair is more healthy and my curl pattern is being restored. Now because of that, I don't know if I'm a 4C. That's crazy, right? I think that in a couple of weeks, I'm going to reassess whether or not I'm a 4C because my hair was so damaged that I just assumed that it was a 4C. But now that I've been doing the deep conditioning, I don't know, I might be a 4B, a 4A. We'll see, in a couple weeks, I'll reassess that and determine, am I a 4C, am I not a 4C? So let's get this wrap off to see what we're working with. So earlier I told you that I had to do my hair in smaller sections, braiding or twisting it out, because when I braid my hair straight back, I was losing moisture like crazy. This is a better way for my hair. My hair is much more happy when it is braided like this. I'll pull one out so that you can see. My hair is so much easier to detangle. Look at that. I can literally use my fingers to separate the hair and detangle it. I was not able to do that before. And I think that that is amazing. Even if it's just for hair that is easier to detangle, I'm already winning because that was like, the worst part. One thing that I have noticed that I want to start to target more is the frizz. My hair is still very frizzy. I'm gonna look at what helps with frizzing and then see if I can do something that will help. The curl pattern is gonna be looking like a chunky curl because it's a braid out at this point. I'm gonna show you my edges and do a little bit of a close-up so that you can see. I'm not telling you what the product is because I'm not 100% sold yet. I'm still doing some research and I'm still trying to decide do I want to add this product to my hair. And once I decide what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let you know what that thing is. I mean, if you wanna take a guess, you can go ahead and put it in the comments. And if you're right, I'll let you know if you're right. <laughs> so this is my hair. And this is the part that I want to focus on. So it's usually right here that the postpartum hair loss really, really affects me. Right in here. And I want to assess whether or not I'm going to use that product to really target these areas so I can get more growth happening at a faster pace. So something that you have to know is that my daughter is seven months now. So I am just at the part where I slow down with the postpartum hair loss with my first child. So I'm assuming that the same type of pattern is going to be occurring now. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys where I am right now in terms of my edges, in terms of what my hair looks like right now, so that if I do decide to add this new thing, that I have a proper look and a proper understanding of where I started and where I end up. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you've been here from the beginning, following along with the journey, type something in the chat box. Let me know that you're an OG follower and that you're here for it. Let me know. And of course, I want you to join the club. I need you to join the club because you are giving me all the life in the world to continue on this hair journey. So just hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you're notified when I post new videos. Of course. I always, always, always welcome you to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, and I will see you in the next video. The really cool thing about these Friday videos is that I premiere them. S premiere them. Mm -hmm. So if you are... The really cool thing about these... Hey, how's it going? How is your Friday going so far? Mine is going great.